Right, so welcome to this new section where we are going to be learning about a lot of different accessories and our main focus here is going to be on filters. So this is the first filter that we're going to be talking about which is the polarizing filter which is perhaps one of the most popular filters you know right from the film days up till now because what you're going to learn about this particular filter is that whatever it does it's very tough to replicate in post-processing. Okay, that'll be the main thing that you're going to learn here. Therefore, even though the times have changed, you know, the editing softwares have improved and whatnot, this filter's usage still holds a lot of value and importance. Okay, so whenever we discuss any filter or accessory in this course, we're going to kind of go through this process okay so what does it achieve that means what are its benefits then we're actually go, gonna go out on the field and see a demonstration of its usage to understand it practically we're also going to be seeing how to exactly buy these things because sometimes they just might require even the purchase of a few more accessories for it to work properly finally even though most of these filters that we're going to see in this section do a good job for you there are some disadvantages of using uh, these filters so there will be some things to keep in mind we'll also be discussing that and a lot uh, more so first of all let's see what does a polarizing filter actually achieve when you put it on top of your lens so the number one reason of using a polarizing filter is to reduce or cut out reflections and glare like you can even see in this photo here okay like you can see the left part of this water is you can see the glare and the reflections but this just cut through and you can see everything and we'll actually be seeing a very similar live demonstration of this in just some moments from now also so it reduces uh, reflections like you can see in the shots which are coming in front of you it also uh, reduces haze like you can see in the shot in front of you so this is very popular with people who like to shoot in hilly regions because the mountains that you see behind can sometimes appear to be very hazy because of all the pollutants that are there in the air but this filter just lets in only certain types of lights into the camera we're going to actually be seeing later on how this filter kind of works we're not going to go too much into the science of it but at least I'll tell you the basics of why this happens okay so that time you'll understand but basically it's going to cut out that haze give you a much better looking shot it also makes the sky much bluer and darker okay like you can see in this these images also and because it cuts down all this bad type of light coming in the camera therefore it also improves the colors and the contrast and therefore the shots that you take your landscape shots just seem more punchier that's the word I can use like with a lot of contrast and good colors as opposed to if you were not using the polarizing filter towards the end of this video I'll also be talking about uh, you know when we talk about the disadvantages I'll actually be telling you which of these advantages is the number one advantage and you know when is the real time to really use a polarizing filter okay so I'll also be telling you that that which out of these four is my favorite uh, benefits okay but here's what we're going to do right now first of all I'm just going to be showing you a quick demonstration actual demonstration on the field of how to use it but before we go out on the field what we have to know is what is the sort of pol uh, polarizing filter we will be using what are some of the accessories we'll be using along with it and also before we go out we'll be seeing how to exactly mount this on the lens of our camera so let's go through this process all right so first of all the polarizing filter that I will be using is by a company called Tiffin and I'll be using a 77 mm polarizer so 77 is basically the size of this filter which goes on to the top of the lens and that is going to be a slight uh, issue okay of course the bigger the number the larger the filter gets later on you know even in the document that I've provided, I would have probably provided you more brands of these circular polarizers. But one thing I can tell you straight away is you have to buy good ones. But I'll talk about that slightly later on. Right now, we're just looking at how to mount this. Now, why is this a problem? Let me show you. So right now, for the field exercise that we will be doing, I will be just, I won't really be using a wide angle lens. Not for right now, because this is just not really going to be a landscape shot as you're going to be seeing. It's just going to be, uh, we're going to be focusing on a body of water basically. So it's just to show you the demonstration of the filter itself. Okay, so I'm just going to be using the 35mm prime lens that I've got. I could have used any lens to be uh, frank. Uh, but here's the thing. Now, when, I, when you go on here, 
somewhere on these lengths, and I'll be showing you this later, you can actually find the, like on the back side of this lens, you can actually find, uh, they mention the size that it can take of a filter, okay? For example, it will be mentioned like 52 mm, uh, you know, 62 mm, 77 mm, 49 mm, and so that you can come to know what size does it take the filter, okay? For example, here also, like right now, if I just show you under tech specs, I'm on the Nikon website for this, and you can see filter attachment size is 52 mm. But the problem here is that I'm using a 77 mm filter. That means the filter is much bigger than this front part of this lens, which accommodates a 52 mm size filter. So here, in this case, what you need to do is, you basically need another accessory called as a step-up ring like this, okay? So what these step-up rings like, you can see here is, they come in these sets you can buy. So for example, 50, 49 to 52 will be the first one, 52, and they all can be removed. I'll be showing you how this works. So what you do is, for example, here, I have this set with me, like I'll be showing you. So I put the 52 to 55 one first, okay? Like this on top of the lens. So it just kind of, makes the filter thread size bigger of the lens and then you put more and more and you keep stacking it till the final one is 70 to 77 mm and then you'll easy, easily be able to attach the 77 mm filter on the top of the lens. So it's not a problem if you have a bigger size filter because then you can just use these step up rings, okay? The opposite is actually the problem. If you have a bigger lens and you have a smaller filter, okay? So always make sure you buy the bigger filter. I'll be talking about this point uh, later on also. Right now, let me just show you how this whole mounting process actually works. All right, so these are the things that I have with me. I've got my lens on which this polarizing filter will go here. And because like already explained to you before, there might be a difference in the size of the, uh, filter that this thread of the lens takes, we have these uh, step up rings in order to just compensate for that. So got my lens, all I have to do is just check what is the size. So the size, you'll find it behind, not sure you can see right now, but it says here 52. So somewhere on the lens, you will find the filter size being mentioned here. It says 52 mm, but I've got a 77 mm filter here, polarizing filter. So this is where we're gonna first of all apply these step up rings and then put the filter. So how it works is these rings are basically stacked on top of each other. Like I can actually remove each one of them. They just thread into one another. For example, the first ring here that you see here is what is actually gonna be mounted on the lens, which is the 52 to 55, that means this will be easily able to fit, right? 52, 52, this takes it to a slightly higher thread which is on which the 55 to 58 uh, step up ring is uh, attached Then it goes from, just check, 58 to 67, 62. Then it goes from 62 to 67, and then it goes from 67 to 72, so, and finally, the last one is 72 to 77. That's where we stop because this is 77, right? You also get step up rings in which you don't get it in multiple rings like this. You just get like one big ring in which the smaller one will be like 52 and the large one will just be 77. Those are less, less flexible, but then easier to assemble probably than this, but that's not such a, a big deal. Okay, right now, all I have to do is just mount this from the 52 part here, obviously. And so now we basically have a lens which will accommodate a 77 filter like this. So this is where I mount my polarizing filter. And then once we are on the field, as we're gonna see in the video that is about to come, we just basically have to rotate this top part. This is actually the part on the polarizing filter. By rotating this filter is how you achieve uh, the polarizing effect, or rather not achieve, you will be able to achieve it almost at any rotation, but you can magnify its effect. Like how strong that polarizing effect is there is when you rotate it like this, as you're gonna see when I show you in the uh, video. So obviously one important point here, the tip that I can give you is that whenever you buy your polarizing filter, it's always a good practice to buy the biggest size one, okay? It's this, because this setup is easy. The step up rings are very cheap to buy. But what will happen is, I'm using a 77mm 77 filter here. Now suppose if I change over my lens, 
and let's say like for example when I use my wide angle lenses as you're going to be seeing later on they take a 77 mm size so I will be able to use this there also and on the smaller lenses also which take something like 52 uh, and basically these step up springs will allow and since they're very cheap this usually makes for a much more economical decision because if I was to buy a 52 mm uh, polarizer the problem will be that if I'm using a bigger lens then I won't be able to use it okay because then it'll just be smaller than the lens it'll just come inside your shot so that the other way around is not easy to achieve so buy the biggest size and then that'll work on most of your other lenses now that you know how to do this let's go outside and let's see how a polarizer filter works all right so you can see here that I am near the stream of water this is what we will be shooting and if I just show you from the front We've exactly got that setup that we just saw with the polarizing filter accompanied by the step up filters with the lens. And what I'm going to be doing here is that I will be rotating the front part of the lens like I showed you before and you're going to see the effect on the water. So just see this right now you can see the glare and when I turn it almost like magic it cuts out that glare and reflections and you can see through again. If I rotate it, the reflections come back, the glare comes back, and again if I rotate it, boom, absolutely crystal clear. So also, let's just have, I've took two shots, so let's see that. All right, so there is a world of difference between this shot and just, see, this shot. Isn't this absolutely fantastic? This is what I was referring to when this video started. Now let's say we've got this particular shot, no matter what kind of editing software you have, you simply cannot turn this to this. Okay, like later on in this course, I'll be talking another, about another filter whose, uh, you know, the effect of which can be repl replicated easily. So therefore, I don't tell my students to buy that filter. What that is, I'll talk about later. But here, I simply cannot, no matter how good you are at editing, you cannot do this right? This is why polarizing filters are so popular. So let's, now this is not really like a landscape shot, right? Let's actually see a shot where this particular feature really, really helped me get a good shot. So here you can see I was shooting this little waterfall here. I was really shooting low because my main emphasis here was on getting a very strong foreground. Okay, so you can see here because I was using a polarizing filter, all that glare which was near this foreground basically did not affect my shot and you can actually see even from this kind of low angle, you can see through the rocks below. Yes, a bit of glare obviously will come. That's, you know, sometimes you can, or not all light will always, uh, always be polarized, but you can see pretty much we're getting a clear look here, which really enhances this shot. And like we've seen before, you know, in one of these shots, it also has a great effect on the glare, which these wet rocks usually give out. Okay, so if I didn't have this polarizing filter, what you would find is how it looks to the eye where sh these rocks, they seem too shiny, right? But we don't have that because it even cuts out that bad, bad glare. So you can actually see that vegetation through uh, the water. And it, this looks really uh, nice, beautiful. You can see the texture of the rocks. Great. And you can see just the overall the colors and the shot has a great contrast. That's because of the polarization effect. And only the good light is being allowed to enter the filter here. All right, now what I want to quickly do is I actually just want to briefly talk about how this filter actually works in a very layman language, okay, not in a scientific uh, language. And also what are some of the issues that come uh, with the usage of a polarizing filter. And then also I'll be telling you uh, when to use it and when not to use it. So let's get into this discussion also. 